Hey Algebra 2, today we're going to talk about complex numbers. Um, we're going to be adding them and finding the absolute value of them. Well, um, the big thing about complex numbers is understanding the square root of negative 1. What we've been told this whole time up until now is that you cannot have a negative underneath the root. But now, uh, we're going to figure out what do we do when there actually is a negative underneath the root. Well, uh, again, the whole purpose behind this is that if I were to have a graph of a parabola, okay, um, these are called your zeros, or um, that's where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And when you do your Pythagorean, not Pythagorean theorem, the quadratic formula, um, this is to help us solve where it crosses the x-axis. And this here is called the discriminant. Well, if this ends up a positive number, that means it's crossing through two points. Now, if this were to end up being 0, so square root of 0, that means it's going to cross only at one point. And then if this ends up a negative number, and that's what we're going to be dealing with today, that means it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So these are examples. Um, so it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So you'll know what it, uh, it looks like if you have a negative underneath the root. You know that it does not cross the x-axis. So that means in some cases you, end up, you do end up with a negative um, underneath the root. So instead of saying the square root of negative 1, we've now, we're going to call this i for imaginary number because again we've said that you can't have a negative underneath the root. So we call this i. Now uh, what you need to know is i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So if, you were to, if I were to ask you what i squared is equal to, that would, like, that would be as if saying the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And we know that a root times itself just cancels out. So our answer would be negative 1. i squared is equal to negative 1. All right, well, um, let's just get to some problems here. Our first problem says simplify negative 2 plus root negative 16. Well... What you want to do, we can break up root 16 to be the negative 1 times 16. So now when we take the square root of 16, that becomes a 4. And the square root of negative 1, we said, is i. And since these are not like terms, this would be your final answer. You cannot combine the negative 2 and the 4 because 1 has an i and 1 does not. Okay, so same thing here. We have a 6 minus 4. Now, since we see a negative, we're going to pull that up front and make it an i. But you can't break down 5, so you're still left with the positive 5 underneath. Because, again, negative 5 is negative 1 times 5. So we just pulled out the negative 1 and made it an i. Now we have no negative underneath um, the root. Okay. So, again, this is we've done problems exactly like this, except if we ha uh, the new thing is that we have a negative underneath the root, which means... Again, you pull it out and make it an i. So here when it says to solve each equation. So what you want to do is move everything to one side. So you subtract 16 from both sides. So we get x squared is equal to negative 16. And now you root it because we need to find x, not x squared. So these cancel out. And in class, I've told you that whenever you take a square root of a variable, the other side is going to be plus minus. And here, the square root of 16 is 4. And since there's a negative underneath, we're going to pull it out and make an i. Now, since we took the square root of 16 and it all came out, there's nothing left underneath the root. So your final answer is just x equals plus minus 4i. Okay? Now, this next one, again, we want to get the variable by itself before we root it. So we're going to divide by 3. Let's get y squared is equal to negative 8. So we take the square root, so those can cancel out. y is equal to positive negative. Now we could break down 8 to be negative 4 times 2. Because again, we want to simplify as much as we can. So when you take the negative 4 out, it becomes 2i. Square root of 4 is 2. Bring the negative out to make i, and you're left with this root 2 underneath. And that's your final answer. Okay. Again, negative underneath the root, you just pull it out, and it becomes an i. Now this problem says to solve. So now, 
we have y to the fourth, y to the second, no y. So what you're going to want to do is break this up into two parentheses. Okay? So the front is going to be y squared, y squared. Since that's a minus, we know we have opposite symbols. And the factors of 100 that have a difference of 21 are 25 and 4. Okay, we're going to set this equal to 0. So here you would set this side equal to 0 by, um, sorry, we could set this parentheses equal to 0, and we could set this parentheses equal to 0. So when we move that 25 over, we get a negative 25, and when you root it, since you have a negative underneath the root, we know it's going to be positive, negative, and then when you take the negative out, it becomes an i. So we have 5i. Here, add 4 to both sides. So you have y squared is equal to 4. When you take a square root, notice there's no negative underneath, so you don't even need an i here. So y is equal to positive negative 2. So these are your answers. So you have four answers to this problem. And again, if you have a negative, bring it out, it becomes an i. If you don't, then you don't, you don't even need an i there. Okay? Let's go to our next example. This one says write in the form a plus bi. Now, just like English, uh, math has its own notation as well, proper notation. So when you're dealing with i, you want to have your the i's on the right side of the numbers without i. So here we distribute the negative. So we have 7 minus 8i minus 5 plus 3i because negative times negative. So we combine like terms. It says find your numbers without i first. So 7 minus 5 is 2. Negative 8i plus 3i is negative 5i. And again, they don't have the same term, so therefore this is as far as you can go. That would be your final answer. Okay, on this example, we could simplify the 48 and the negative 3. So we could say this is negative 7 plus, and since there's a negative on the inside, we take it out and make i root 3 plus 2 minus now we could break down negative 48 to be negative 16 times 3 because 16 is a perfect square. So we're going to end up pulling that out. So we have negative 7 plus i root 3 plus 2. When you take out the negative 16, it becomes 4i because the square root of 16 is 4. The negative comes out and becomes i, and you're left with the root 3 underneath. So now again, a plus bi. So we're going to take these numbers first. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. i root 3 minus 4i. 4 4i root 3. 1 minus 4 is negative 3i root 3. And that would be your final answer. Okay. So again, we're just breaking it down, pulling out the negatives to become an i, and then combine like terms. Let's make sure the i's go... Um, the terms with i go last. All right, so one more problem, or one more type of problem. Find the absolute value of each complex number. Well, we're talking about a complex, uh, complex numbers, and those actually have a complex plane. We're used to doing x and y as our, our chart. Um, what we're going to do now is this is in the format of a plus bi, okay? If I were to give you this, 2 plus 3i, okay? I'm going to move this one over here. It's in the format of a plus bi. a kind of acts like, it acts as your x value. So you're going to go over 2, and then you're going to go, 3 is like your y value, 1, 2, 3. So you went up 3. So this coordinate right here, the way you would label it, is 2 plus 3i. Now, when it says find the absolute value, it's talking about this uh, terminal side here, okay, connecting from the origin to that point. We have a right triangle here that we can construct. So the distance here is 2, the distance here is 3, and the way we find a hypotenuse for a right triangle is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, in this case. 2 squared plus 3 squared equals, um, let's call this our hypotenuse, so h squared. 
So you get 4 plus 9 equals 8 squared. So that's 13 equals 8 squared. And then you take the square root. So in a sense, the formula that we can actually use, if we were to distribute or replace this with a and b, you'll notice here that we have a squared plus b squared equals our absolute or our hypotenuse squared. So to find just this side, here's our formula. Okay, so just to find h, we have the square root of a squared plus b squared. So how do we apply this? Well, this is in the position of A. This is in the position of B. So we set it up with the root over top. Okay. So we have 3 root 2 squared plus B is negative 2 squared. Okay. Because again, this is how you find your absolute value. So we can say this is equal to the absolute value of A plus BI. So here, 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2, so 9 times 2 is 18, plus 4, because negative 2 squared. So you get root 22, which you cannot break down, there's no factors of 22 that are perfect square, so that would be your absolute value. Okay? Now let's do the, uh, the next problem. Same directions apply, find the absolute value. But notice here, there's no number in front, there's no A value. Okay, so technically it's 0 plus 3i root 2. So when you plug into your, um, your formula here, you have 0 squared plus 3 root 2 squared. And you can find, you'll see that there's a shortcut here. You end up with 0 plus, again, 9, 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2. So you get 18. Okay. So you end up with the square root of 18, which if you were to break that up, that gives you 9 times 2. When you take the square root of 9, you're just left with 3 root 2. Notice it's the same value. So therefore, we know a shortcut here. When you're left with one term, either A or BI, then the absolute value is just that term. So we have 3 root 2 here. Here we have 3 root 2 as our answer. Here... On this problem now, if we follow that, that same shortcut, we have no bi here. So therefore, our answer, we know, is going to be the positive version of a. So our answer should be 6. So I'll show you how to do that with the work. So we have negative 6 squared plus 0 squared. Okay. So that gives us 36 plus 0 which is just 36, so square root of 36, which is 6. So again, the shortcut is if you know, if you only have one term, so if I were to give you 5i, I know the absolute value is just going to be 5. If I, my only term, I say find the absolute value is 3, my answer would be 3 because um, you don't have another term to add on top of it. So that is our last example um, for complex numbers, addition, and absolute value. So good luck with that, and uh, keep watching this multiple times. I know I went pretty quick, but since it's a video, you can always rewind and watch it again. So good luck with that. Have a good day. Bye.